G'day guys, Calvin from the Cartoon Company in New Zealand. I've been wiring up a 1UZ VVTI engine. This particular vehicle is going to be a race car. It's got a Link Thunder, it's got a relay fuse box. Thunder, feel the thunder, thunder. The loom's looking like this, yet, yet to be plugged in. It's got some ID injectors, fuel pressure sensor, oil pressure sensor. It's actually going to have that filter block on it. Drive-by-wire throttle. Um, thermal couples. Got to, got to sort them. They're yet to be configured. And twin wide bands. Twin wide bands, yes. It's also going to have one of these. A link dash. So that is a really cool piece of kit. However, we need to set it up. So it's a, a bit of a deal that Link did with AIM. And fortunately... I've done quite a lot of aim dashes because of the sprint boats we work on and quite a number of them run the aim dashes. Some of them have the older ones. Once you've done some of the older aim dashes, the new ones are a breeze. Absolutely lovely. So there's a bit of a setup between the link and the dash. Makes it really, really easy to do. So let's go through the setup process, power this dash up for the first time, and uh, hopefully, for those of you that want a dash, you'll understand a bit more about what they do and how they work. I also did one, uh, the 47 Ford, I did one in the Prado. I haven't done a big wiring video of the Prado, which, because it was a heap of work, and um, in the sprint boats as well. I've also just supplied one for a, a very, very powerful GTR Skyline, which I was looking at the other day, and that's a lovely, lovely car. So let's power it up. Uh, now, can. All the links have the same. They have a CAN, a controller area network, a CAN bus. It's like it's it's really simple if you want it to be simple, and imagine it like a, a a train track. You've got two tracks running along and a station, two tracks running along and a station, two tracks running along and a station, and you feed data up and down those two lines, and it you can hop on and off at each station, providing all the stations talk the same language. So are working at the same speed. When you get to the end of the line, you need to tell it that's the end of the line. So you put a terminating resistor in it. Though sometimes you can get away without it. I wired this little dongle. We'll talk about that very quickly in this. I didn't put a terminating resistor in it, and I can still talk to my cell phone with that. The dash... They have a terminating resistor built in as standard equipment and it's default on. So the dash is expecting to be at the end of the bus. So you don't have to worry about a resistor in that wiring, which is really, really handy. So let's turn it on for the first time. Now this is all new. I have not set up the link. I have not set up the dash. I've just wired it. So I've got CAN bus, CAN bus 1, CAN 1, from the ECU. It runs up to these body plugs, into the fuse box loom, and to the dash, to this plug here. It's got extra wiring to reach across the car. I chose not to put a plug in it at this stage, but it can if we need to. Okay, so the first power up 
of the dash. Uh, let's have a look. We turn the ignition on. That humming throttle is going to annoy me. We remove the annoying throttle. Oh, that's so much better. We plug in the dash. So the dash wiring was really, really, was really simple. We have a power wire. That's this 9 to 15 volt red wire. We have a ground. That's that, that black wire. Can one negative. That's that blue wire. And so it must be can one positive on this, uh, I think it's white. Could be, no, it's white. So let's plug him in. And look, there it is. I must have got the wiring right, because it powers up. Okay. And it brings up a blank screen. It's not actually flicky, it's just a video. Okay, let us whip into the CCU. So I'm going into the laptop and we'll do some setup. Hello, I'm over here now. Righto. Uh, connect to the ECU. That's a, that's a really good start. So this is a VVTI Lexus. Um, we're going to go in here. There's this little title here. So we go uh, ECU controls. Can set up. And it brings up this little box here. Can 1 is where our dash is. It's user defined. 1 megabit per second per second is going to work. Just fine. Channel 1 mode click on here. And let's find that dash. So there's a list of generic protocols that we've got. That's a big word for the day. Protocol. Oh, transmit, link, aim, MXS, strata, dash. So we click on there. It brings up CAN ID automatically at 1,000. And I think that's going to work. And we apply that. And look what happens at the dash. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. We've got throttle. We've got some engine temps. We've got some oil temp. We've got some map. Pressure and go, and we got a fault code. Oh, we got a oh, someone unplugged the throttle. So there's fault codes. Ah, oh. so that's good. That's working. That's pretty cool. And that was so easy. Let's see what screens we've got. There's a menu. It works just like that. That was so easy. But let's say we want to have some different screens on it. We can set that up as well. Before I do, I'm going to turn on the OBD2. So let's go back into the laptop and make some changes. But oh, um, so we, we're going to go to CAN2. We click on CAN2. We're going to put the OBD OB, onboard diagnostics. We're going to click that on number two. But for that dongle to work, we're going to change the speed. And this is why I put them on separate channels. The dash is automatically configured for one megabit. And those little dongly things, uh, I know work at 500. They don't generally work at the one megabit. I'm going to push apply and OK. And yes, I'll store those settings. Store to ECU. I can grab my phone and I'll go to the talk program. I've already configured it to work with that one and hopefully it connects in. We can see here I've got communication because I've got engine temperature at 22 which matches the dash. So it's really easy to get communication 
Link ECU, OBD2 port as well, onto your smartphone. Very cool. Now back to that AIM dash. Let's go into the AIM software and put some different screens up. I've popped into the Race Studio 3. Let's try and get uh, some devices here. Right, that was really quick. So I just connected, I went configurations, here's the device. Here's some information that's coming from the link. And the dash is pre-programmed for the protocol from the link ECU. So it's really, really simple. Now I'm going to receive, I'm going to take the configuration from there and receive it. So that's the standard link configuration. I'm going to pop over here. So let's open that configuration. And let's just save that as, so we don't, lose our notes ECU string so there it is it's the basic link one I only got 40 channels enabled it would be nice if we had a few more but I want to look at uh, at the moment shift lights and alarms so we've got number five was flashing that's low oil pressure so that's this uh, one on the side six there's a coolant temp and an ecu fault is number four so we can put extra alarms on if we want there's also shift lights coming across the top they come from the outside in. So there's where your shift lights are. Display is what I want to look at. And it has, it's meant to have three pages. That page, that page, and that page. And they look okay. Working on quite a number of sprint boats and the aim dashes, I have learned some tricks. One of them is to not stress out when weird stuff happens. My dash just did weird things. I turned it off. I turned it back on. I waited a few moments and it's all good again. They are awesome. I really do like them. I didn't initially so much, but once I've done a little bit with them, I think they're very good pieces of equipment. Here we go. So we've got laps, oil temp. Maybe we'll look at it on the screen. So these are the three different setups. I'm not sure we were going to have the speedo. Got odometer if you want, RPM. Still got fault codes. I've still got the throttle disconnected on the engine. There's a heap on here. Oh, that's a good screen. I like that one. Very flicky. So here we are on the PC again, and say we want to adjust something or, or change something on here. We've got inlet air temp, we've got engine temp, we've got lambda. So let's say we instead we want to have oil pressure. Click on that screen there. We, we're going to get the information from the ECU itself we're going to come we're going to find fuel pressure oil pressure so 
So we put the oil pressure on. And we don't want uh, fault codes here. We're going to change that to... Are we going to do oil temperature or fuel? Have we got a fuel pressure? Or we've got fuel pressure. Let's do fuel pressure today. ECU oil pressure, ECU fuel pressure. So that's changed the bottom of there. Now let's fire that into the unit. Transmit. Waiting, 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 waiting. Waiting. Woohoo! And the dash does this reset. Just waiting, waiting, waiting again. And we'll save air. We'll save that. That's awesome. Wait for the dash. I did learn some patience working on all this sort of stuff. And I watched another man who was really, really good at setting up all this sort of stuff one day. And he worked very slowly and very methodically. So I learned not to rush these sorts of things. I just did a reset. Takes a little while. And we can see here on the screen, we have different um, figures to what we started. Now I've got oil pressure and fuel pressure. So if you're thinking about doing a race car or even many road cars now, these dashes are a really, really awesome bit of kit. And once you get your head around how to set them up, they're quite straightforward. So I hope that's been somewhat helpful and we'll talk to you again soon. Catch you later.